guys, Lord of Flames here, and today we're going to watch one of Tad's top videos next video. Hey guys, Lord of Flames here, and today we're going to react to one of the videos that's by Tad's top videos. Remember when I react to one of the other videos, something about all the SCPs, scariest ones? So, this one. It's not about part two, and I was close to get that ready, but now someone calling me to do the Aquatic SCP's Top 20. So, I'll go ahead with it, and it's one hour long, oh my god. Another one hour reaction video here, folks. Man. Whew. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Full screen and we're ready. This video contains unsettling content and is not suitable for viewers who suffer from aquaphobia and maleophobia. Viewer discretion advised. Uh huh, thanks for the warning. Again, it's a good thing for uh, people to have some warning stuff before everything begins, you know. SCP-1371, Object Class, Safe SCP-1371 appears to be a juvenile leucistic axolotl. SCP-1371 appears to age as a common axolotl would, although it is fairly durable and capable of withstanding moderate changes in atmosphere and contaminants that would normally harm a member of its species. SCP-1371 is buoyant in air, capable of swimming upwards distances of approximately 50 meters from the ground. Although SCP-1371 spends most of its time on the ground and rarely ascends higher than one meter, while SCP-1371 is airborne, special care should be taken not to apply physical force without the intent to hold it, as this may damage the object. During testing protocol, researcher Sanders attempted to pet 1371, causing it to descend and then ascend upwards at a continually increasing speed until it was retrieved. Following these observations and additional tests, it is believed that when affected by an external force that would move it downwards, it generates a massive excess of buoyancy to compensate for its displacement. SCP-1371 is kept in a glass aquarium located in Level 1 at Site 18. It is fed a diet of one earthworm every three days. SCP-1371 is not to be handled physically. That's interesting, but that's the real footage, right? Because it couldn't be like CGI SCP or animation. Object class, safe. SCP-098 is a species of previously unknown crustacean. Crab, they resemble crabs, I'm just but the front limbs terminate in knife-like structures that incorporate silica to form an crab. extremely sharp edge. Specimens reach a larger still, size than normal for land-dwelling arthropods. At 40 centimeters tall, and as large as 60 centimeters across. Specimens prefer an environment with ready concealment and shallow pools of water. They are able to breathe both water and air, splitting their time between the two environments. They also are capable of vocalizations using a larynx-like structure attached to the primitive lungs. SCP-098 demonstrates pack hunting behavior when attacking prey. When specimens detect a prey animal, they will attempt to surround it. They will mimic the sounds made by the creature, or draw it into position. When ready, one specimen will approach the prey animal. When its attention is fixed on the first specimen, others will move behind the prey and attempt to cut the tendons of the legs or other limbs. They will continue to mimic the sounds of the prey animal makes to disorient it. After making a cut, the specimen of SCP-098 will spit a viscous mucus over the wound. The substance hardens rapidly, preventing blood loss or infection. This continues until the prey animal is completely immobilized. At this point, specimens will begin to feed on the prey animal by cutting off small pieces of flesh. This begins with soft, readily accessible tissues, such as those of the face and extremities, before moving to other parts of the body. Specimens of SCP-098 will only feed so long as the prey animal is capable of respiration. Feeding can last several hours or several days, depending on the size of the prey animal and the numbers of specimens present. SCP-098 normally poses little threat to adult humans, preferring smaller prey, such as dogs, cats, and small pigs. Yeah. However, 
they have attacked larger prey when a sufficient number of specimens were present, or else other food was unavailable. Members of SCP-098 are kept in a room with small pools of water and a sandy substrate. Rocks and driftwood are left in a random arrangement for SCP-098 to nest in. The enclosure is cleaned on a weekly basis. During this time, all members of SCP-098 are accounted for first, to prevent injury or death to personnel or SCP-098. Any members of SCP-098 that appear ill or injured are removed and examined. SCP-098 was discovered in Brazil after a rash of child I still disappearances. Don't know why they had to do with those type of sensor sounds? It's like blocking some of the lines, like. SCP-327, object class Euclid. SCP-327 is a female specimen of mammalian species resembling members of the Order Serenia, specifically West Indian manatee. Of course, they actually the subject bears anomalous bodily features. Hard sight, the flippers so bear no distinct like arms, us, and the skull and facial features resemble that of a human. Or, uh, find SCP-327 was hit by a boat propeller five to ten years ago before retrieval as evidenced by heavy scarring on the head and back, and traces of severe head trauma. SCP-327 is sapient and capable of speaking simple English sentences, though it experiences significant difficulty in doing so, both in pronunciation and comprehension of concepts. SCP-327's anomalous effect is based around its primary vocalization. Taking the form of songs similar of to that, when you vote to listen to this on your butt, these vocalizations you are regarded as highly right unpleasant now is, to listen to, it's my fan, and I, will result in severe headaches and audiovisual hallucinations in humans, assisting around six to twelve hours. So, if you want so to will often report claustrophobia, bit, an aversion to water and aquatic and animals, and, right, and occasionally right sensations similar to that of drowning. Other mammals will experience the same effects during vocalizations. Algae and plankton within approximately a kilometer of SCP-327's location will reproduce at incredibly high rates. The resulting algal bloom will cause considerable oxygen depletion and neurotoxin levels in the area, and causing mass die-offs of local fish and mollusk life. There are no anomalous properties present in the algae itself, and SCP-327 is immune to all effects caused by its vocalizations. Interviews with it have revealed uh, few concrete details of its origins due to the specimen's inability to adequately express the information. Yeah. It has implied the existence of other specimens of the species that to live in the Gulf of Mexico that game. and the Caribbean Sea. However, no anomalies resembling the descriptions have the been reported. That creature. SCP-327 uh. is contained inside a saltwater tank within sight. The tank is cleaned on a weekly basis, or immediately after an algal bloom event. All staff interacting with it are entering the containment, wear sound-canceling headphones. Any staff who report suffering the effects of its properties are removed from active duty until cleared by a staff therapist. SCP-327 is fed 15 kilograms of lettuce and assorted leafy vegetables each day, accompanied by appropriate nutritional supplements. English language instruction for it has been approved and carried out by doctors Amberley and Watson. Hello, 327. Hello, Dr. Amberley. 327, ready to answer questions again. Very well. We were talking about the song yesterday. Could you tell me more? Yes. Song for fish and animals. Song for plants. Song for people. Song for home. Song is good. Song is not like this. Song not like words. Song is song. Song make things good. Song not good now. And what happened to the song? Made it dead. The boat then? Yes. It's okay though. Bad song not hurt animals here. You and Watson help 327 make good song back. SCP-1128 Object Class Euclid SCP-1128 is an entity that manifests as a massive aquatic predator to anyone given a full description of the being's appearance through either spoken or written descriptions or visual depictions of the being. Persons infected by it will initially exhibit no abnormal behavior, 
though some cases show a general aversion to activities involving bodily immersion in water, such as bathing or swimming. Should subject ever be fully immersed in water, they will disappear completely under the surface of the water, regardless of the water's actual depth. In most cases, subjects will reappear moments later in a panic state and frantically try to leave the water, while in some other cases the water will become polluted with blood and debris, confirmed to be the remains of the subject. Subjects that have reappeared intact claim that they were transported to a vast ocean where they are pursued by SCP-1128. Interviews with these individuals carry some risk factor of further SCP-1128 contamination, as descriptions of the being's appearance trigger further infections. 1128 infection can be traded with Class C amnestics, as it appears memory of the entity or descriptions of it are required for its anomalous properties to take effect. Written descriptions or imagery of SCP-1128's appearance or videos of the entity breaching found outside the Foundation are destroyed, and Class C amnestics are administered to anyone exposed to such information or showing signs of 1128 contamination. A written description of the entity's appearance is kept at sight for experimental purposes only and is not to be read by anyone other than D-Class used for testing. If exposed, staff report immediately for administration of Class C amnestics. Mobile Containment Force Kappa-12 has been assigned to intercept and redirect any and all water traffic that passes through their designated patrol area by any means necessary. Hmm. <sighs> SCP-331-FR Object Class Safe SCP-331-FR are a species of jellyfish devoid of nematosis, making them completely non-stinging and harmless. Uh. The specimen has a very pronounced purple gradient as well as a stylized golden W, probably of organic design, on the top of its parasol. They're inactive during the day, generally resting and feeding on sugar, however they become much sugar. more active at night, in addition to exposing abnormal capacities. 331-FR's immediate anomalies appear to leave an aquatic environment and move without difficulty in the air. A few minutes after floating in the air, it will gradually begin to produce bioluminescence. Its average luminous flux has been measured at 23 lumens, with peaks of 57 lumens observed at apparently random intervals, which results in light flashes. The result of these light peaks is misunderstood, although they seem to become much less common with the aging of the entity. The specimens are extremely docile and, more surprisingly, seem aware of their environment, and in particular of humans around them. Indeed, the entities avoid obstacles before hitting them, and in particular concentrate their activities around children by spinning around them. Children who sleep in the presence of 331-FR entity report being better rested and less afraid of the dark. With daily exposure, they are more prone to sleep, while a boost in morale is quickly noticeable. 331-FR usually returns to their basin by daybreak, ceasing all abnormal activity. It is interesting to note that if an entity is distracted during its resting phase, it will be much less active during the night, which results in a slower movement of speed and a less luminous glow. SCP-331-FR entities are kept in aquariums of rooms with no opening to the outside. The aquariums are filled with fresh water with a supply of 14 grams of powdered sugar per week for food purposes. The aquarium and water are changed every two months, while the room is cleaned thoroughly every week. The remaining five kits of SCP-331-FR are stored in a safe class locker at Site Aleph, locked using a key assigned to senior researcher Kellen. All kits in the possession of civilians are seized and brought back to Site Aleph for storage. SCP-331-FR was discovered in a town, among other anomalies belonging to the Dr. Wondertainment group. A total of three kits for producing instances of SCP-331-FR had been reported, but only one of the two had given birth to a specimen. The kits were seized and those responsible for their purchase questioned. After thorough research, Foundation experts theorized that SCP-331-FR are not products entirely designed by Dr. Wondertainment, meaning they could be of alien origin, but Dr. Wondertainment would have made some adjustments to make them toys. Oh, no. No. Which is strange if they're aliens or something. 
SCP-695. Where do they Object even class? come from in this land Six. if they want to go back home? SCP-695 appears to be a form of hermaphroditic parasitic eel. They have multiple staged life cycles that use human beings as their primary host. Investigation has shown that 695 may be the result of genetic tampering. It is capable of sustained survival outside of a host, but will seek out a host whenever possible. Appearing to rely primarily on smell and electromagnetic sensitivity. Juvenile SCP-695 are between 3 and 5 centimeters long, but with fully translucent skin and bones. Adult SCP-695 are between 10 and 15 centimeters. They have several hook-like fins down the length of their body and can use these for both aquatic and land-based movement, as well as anchoring inside of the body. SCP-695 has a set of six glands along the spine, capable of emitting several enzymes and complex molecular compounds that mimic neurochemical signals. These chemicals have a marked effect on the human nervous system and are capable of blocking and replacing conscious nerve impulses. These chemicals metabolize within 10 minutes without constant injection, and are untraceable by modern medical equipment. Juvenile SCP-695 exist free-swimming in freshwater lakes and streams. They will attempt to enter male human hosts when they are present in or around infested waters via the mouth, nose, anus, or urethra. Once inside the body, they will infest the nervous and reproductive systems and begin gestation into the adult form. This process typically takes between two to three weeks and coincides with the compromising of the nervous system. Infested subjects will begin to experience twitching, burning, intense thirst, light sensitivity, auditorial visual hallucinations, and increased aggression. SCP-695, after reaching maturity, will begin spawning within the body, with eggs migrating to the urethral canal after being laid. Genital swelling will progressively increase with the buildup of eggs and cases of tissue rupture have been noted. After 72 hours, juvenile SCP-695 will begin exiting the body. In many cases, the physical increase of size coupled with feeding will cause the abdominal area to rupture. They will leave via the vaginal, anal, and oral openings if rupture does not occur. Units of SCP-695 are contained in freshwater tanks with no more than 10 members in any single tank. All water used in containment tanks are from an enclosed system separate from any outside system, with all water used being added manually to the system as needed. Tank seals are checked daily, with any signs of leakage, wear, or attack being immediately reported to the site security and repaired. Staff working with or around SCP-695 of the containment area are suited in full hazmat gear at all times. Staff physically handling SCP-695 do so only in 10-minute increments, with a 30-minute break for examination and observation. Staff failing to clear examination are removed immediately to quarantine. Any SCP-695 colonies found outside of the containment area are immediately sterilized. SCP-695 was initially recovered in Japan after reports of an outbreak of worms reached the local media. The primary colony of SCP-695 was found in fresh water. It appeared that the colony was attempting to migrate into the city plumbing and sewage systems, but was prevented due to the topography of the lake. 27 695 specimens have been found. Four male hosts and one female host were captured for testing, with the rest being destroyed. Huh. SCP-3742 Object Class, Keter. Uh-oh. SCP-3742 is a sentient being with the appearance oh, typical of a human wearing an 1860s style diving suit. It is capable of transforming organic material into a watery liquid by touching the material with its gloves. SCP-3742 to common knowledge is invulnerable. MRI scans also suggest that it is hollow and does not require sustenance nor any type of energy. If it touches any living organic matter, its organs will liquefy and the body will reanimate as an extremely hostile being logged as SCP-3742-1. 90 minutes after exposure, the bodies become extremely waterlogged with visual signs of tissue damage. The signs would be visible cracks all over the skin with water pouring out of them. It's unclear what 3742's motives are, if any, though researchers theorize that it believes that fish should be the dominant species. SCP-3742 is placed in a diving cage submerged 30 meters underwater. 
The cage is made out of titanium and hung by a titanium chain to keep SCP-3742 from breaching containment. SCP-3742 is placed in an oceanic environment typical of a coral reef with wildlife. A waterproof speaker is placed outside of SCP-3742's cage for interviewing purposes. A guardrail has been placed around its containment chamber to ensure scientists' safety. If any change in SCP-3742's behavior is noted, a level 5 is contacted immediately. If SCP-3742 manages to breach containment, Lambda-17 is dispatched. All instances of SCP-3742-1 are frozen, as no other way to contain them is available. These instances are placed in a biohazardous freezing block in Site-47. If any instances escape, they are terminated via an incendiary device. SCP-3742 was discovered in a submersible port in Germany. It was brought to Foundation attention when reports of a living diving suit were reported. Lambda-17 was dispatched to retrieve the object. No casualties were reported. Hmm. SCP-3742, please answer the following questions. SCP-3742, are you aware of the agent that you spread? The ocean is a beautiful SCP-3742, please cooperate with us. SCP-3742, SCP-565, Object Class, Safe. SCP-565 is an ambulatory head, apparently male, which me appears to look. mimic the behavioral patterns of a species of coral crab. Its chief method of ambulation is the manipulation of tendrils of unfurled brain matter which emanate from a large crush wound in the skull. These tendrils are often utilized as legs, allowing SCP-565 to scuttle along the seafloor like a crab but occasionally operated for motion and manipulation in a manner similar to tentacles of an octopus or jellyfish. To date, Foundation research has proven inconclusive on how and why 565 remains animate, or how it is able to manipulate neurotissue in a manner suggestive of musculature. But researchers who wish to contribute work or theory to the investigation of 565 should contact Dr. Schaefer through the usual channels for an appointment and transfer interview. 565 is not immune to the harmful effects of exposure to a watery environment, and has continued to decay as is normal for dead tissue. Forensics testing has linked SCP-565 conclusively to the DNA and dental records of Edward Beltram, deceased 28th December, approximately two years before the first known sighting of SCP-565. Beltram was murdered by his wife Rebecca by striking poisoning and blunt force trauma to the head with description of the murder wound matching the wound through the exposed cranial matter of SCP-565 protrudes. Edward Beltram was exhumed by Foundation researchers. The corpse had been beheaded, the wound suggesting the head had been torn from the shoulders with extreme force rather than cut. Photographs taken by bereaved family members at Beltram's funeral show that the corpse's head was still attached at the time of burial, and the gravesite showed no evidence of having been disturbed. SCP-565 is kept in a Type 3 aquatic object containment tank on Level 4B of Site-77. It is fed twice daily and tested weekly for development or degradation of mental yeah. capacity. Staff who are inclined may view 565 during its scheduled feeding times by appointment with Dr. Schaefer. SCP-565 was caught by like a fishing troll off the coast of- 
The interviewed being captain up, informed the foundation like that, that 565 had been sighted several times by local fishermen and was apparently living as part of a crab colony in the area's don't reef. Like that. Don't like Video that. footage taken by one of the fishermen shows 565 feeding on a dead clownfish. SCP-1608, Object Class, Euclid. SCP-1608 is a blue well located between 50 to 110 meters above the Earth's surface. It's estimated to weigh 154 metric tons and has a length of 29 meters. Its flipper has been imprinted with a stylized image resembling clouds. Further observation has been hampered by its anomalous property. SCP-1608 is intangible and will spend most of its time drifting through the atmosphere. It appears to have limited control over its movements. During this time, 1608 is impossible to observe, as all methods of tracking airborne bodies have proven ineffective. It manifests physically once every half hour and will remain corporeal for a period between 16 to 20 seconds before returning to intangibility. Wait, what? When feeding, SCP-1608 will move itself so that its prey is situated within its intangible stomach, then re-manifest for a period of 1 to 3 seconds to consume it. This effect will also cause any solid matter within its form to be taken into its body. Any other matter taken into 1608's body that is not consumed will be released from its body some point after being taken inside. There appears to be no upper limit to the amount of matter 1608 is capable of holding, and no additional space appears on its body to compensate for this additional mass. Artifacts dating back to as early as 1776 have been discovered originating from its mass. Members of MTF Kappa 11 track and monitor SCP-1608's current location and report its status to Area 78. Airborne personnel maintain a distance of 150 meters away from its estimated location to prevent their crafts from being damaged during containment events. Seaborne personnel report any manifestation events they observe. If containment is breached, members of MTF Kappa 11 will follow its hypothesized location until it manifests then release food for it in a trail leading back to Area 78. SCP-1608 was first observed by the Foundation on 11th August 1929, after several whaling ship sightings of a massive airborne well reached Foundation agents embedded in Tokyo, Japan. Subsequent sightings provided cause for a Foundation investigation. However, all investigation into the anomaly was suspended due to budgetary concerns. Containment began in 1976, after personnel in Tokyo rediscovered the original reports and alerted local command to the anomaly. After brief scouting missions to the previously reported area, the anomaly was confirmed and containment procedures were enacted. As of 19th March 1980, SCP-1608 has been classified as Euclid. Huh. Strange. SCP-4499. Oh. Object class, Euclid. SCP-4499 refers to an anomalous variation of the Great White Shark. Oh, come on! Instances appear identical to their non-anomalous counterparts. Why? 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 Autopsies the have shark? revealed the presence of a human-like larynx in the subject's throats, hypothesized to be responsible for the anomaly's ability to produce human vocalizations. Notably, the presence of a standard immobile basihyal in place of a human tongue should impede the pronunciation of numerous sounds, particularly velar and alveolar consonants. However, listeners universally report clear and concise speech, often describing it as smooth and charismatic. Research into the possibility of cognitohazardous methods of information transfer are ongoing. Electroencephalography on SCP-4499 instances reveal increased activity in the left frontal lobe, atypical of standard variants, likely responsible for the ability to process and articulate complex phonetics. Despite speech capabilities, however, instances do not respond to conversation prompts, instead engaging in infomercial-style sales pitches for various anomalous objects directed towards any humans in close proximity. How 4499 obtains information on these anomalies is currently unknown, and priority status has been assigned to the containment of advertised products not currently in Foundation custody. The length of an advertisement varies significantly. Common sales pitches last anywhere from 30 seconds to 60 minutes. However, on several occasions, a monologue was recorded lasting in excess of several hours. 
Post-test interviews reveal that approximately 85% of subjects report a vested interest in buying the advertised product, stating that they were thoroughly convinced of its necessity by SCP-4499. This is not believed to be the result of any anomalous influence, but instead the highly convincing nature of its advertisements. All 19 known instances of SCP-4499 are contained at Ocean Site 7's Marine Protected Area. Instances are affixed with a tracking device and are implanted with waterproof shock microchips to deter containment breaches. In preparation for potential future sightings, Foundation monitors social media for reports of talking sharks in the Pacific Ocean, and undercover Foundation agents are permanently situated at all major fishing and ocean tour hubs. A joint task force between Foundation operatives and members of the Shark Punching Center has been established to respond to and contain confirmed SCP-4499 appearances. Have you ever looked at your friend's anomalous object collections and thought, boy, I wish mine was that impressive? Well, fret no more, friends, because I'm here today to introduce to you the highly impressive, highly collectible Little Mystery Series by Dr. Wondertainment. Featuring 20 unique anomalous humanoids, you're guaranteed to be the envy of the whole town. Each order includes one random Little Mister, but it's a free collectible Little Mister checklist that will automatically tick itself off for each and every Little Mister you get. Finding amazing anomalies, including Mr. Lie. You won't believe the stuff this guy comes up with. Mr. Mad. We guarantee he'll be the friend you only ever imagined. Mr. Stripes. If Facebook thinks they have your data ready for sale, they have another thing coming. As always, these products are in limited supply, so be sure to call the number on your screen now and don't miss out. What the frick? Disclaimer. Advertise Shark and Advertise Shark Party Limited are not responsible for the disappearance or delivery failure of Mr. Lost. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? I told you, Shark! How? I don't know, man. I just don't think a statue that kills you when you blink has much of a market. No, no, trust me. This thing is cool. I can have 10, 20 anomalous zoos that would kill to have one of these things. Dude, it literally smears feces everywhere. Nobody's going to pay to see that. Besides, it won't do anything if everyone's watching it. Hmm, got a point. What the heck? What about that chainsaw that turns inanimate objects into ghosts? I think you've got something there. Imagine the aesthetic appeal for goths, or haunted house owners. Yeah, that's my angle. Here's what I've got so far. <clears throat> Have you ever looked at the bright, colorful world around you and thought, this happy-go-lucky crap is really cramping my vibe? Then do we have the product for you. Introducing the Chainsaw, the number one product for making what you see, what you saw. Oh, that's nice, man. Love with the tongue-in-cheek slogan. Really catchy. Yeah, I think I've got a bestseller here. Commission's gonna be through the roof. Definitely gotta see what Steve has to say about this. SCP-054-FR Object Class Euclid SCP-054-FR is a phenomenon occurring in some uh, waves off the western coast of and, and the bad. eastern coast of and It's characterized by the physical transformation of affected waves to resemble the jaws of a great white shark Wait, what? 054-FR is capable of remaining unnoticed until it's almost too late to act it's capable of forming on waves at at least four meters tall, but the maximum height of which it can reach is unknown. Appearances can grow considerably if the previous evoked individuals are situated in a distance of at least 250 meters from the coast, whether swimmers, divers, or aquatic vehicles of moderate size. Injuries caused by 054-FR are similar to that which could be accomplished by a great white shark, 
but with pressure being no, directed no, don't tell me you're doing the height something. of the effective wave. One shark movie. Injuries, lethal in 68% of cases, occurred Water during shark? the collapse of the wave over the victim. That's Reported injuries have been simple as a removed limb to total disappearance of the victim. The only method by avoiding injury by 054FR is to dive into the wave before impact. But what the heck? All attempts of damaging manifestations of 054FR via weapon fire have proven ineffective, with shots disappearing into the wall of the water. An exclusion zone of one kilometer has been established around all shorelines where an occurrence of SCP-054-FR have been observed. Only personnel with clearance level of three or higher can enter the containment zones, and only for experimental I purposes. Know that. I know Access that is forbidden to any and all civilians under the pretext of conducting use. research on a population of marine mammals. Photos and videos taken of SCP-054-FR by the public are destroyed. Oh. Nine more to go. SCP-3934. Object class. <sighs> Safe. SCP-3934 is a species of amphibious reptiles produced via anomalous means by Marshall, Carter, and Dark instances. Classified as Plesiosaurus pygmius, grow to only just over half the size of other plesiosaurs, with adult males averaging 1.9 meters in length and adult females averaging 1.7 meters. Specimens are omnivorous and subsist on a diet of fish and aquatic flora. Though created anomalously, instances do not possess any anomalous biological features or adaptations. SCP-3934 are highly social animals, both with members of their own species and with humans. However, while their temperament was conductive to their status as pets, the effort required to care for them was not. Yeah. Due to their size and altered biology, specimens require a specialized diet, oh, so a marine doing habitat something at least one like, million liters in volume, old, and frequent photo medical that care. happened years ago. Some Many buyers could not provide these conditions, which resulted in the vast majority of 3934 instances dying still, or being abandoned within two years of purchase. It's very strange to have that same This outcome idea was likely photo. planned obsolescence on the part of MC and D, like, everyone as it encouraged repeat photo? purchases of infant that. instances to replace dead or unwieldy like this, which it is. Abandoned or wild-born instances of SCP-3934 often react with uncharacteristic violence towards humans and other mammals. A higher degree of carnivorous predation and territoriality are also common attributes of these feral specimens. In at least three cases, multiple feral instances mated to form wild pods. The largest of these was located in Lake Champlain, where six feral specimens resided prior to their containment. Through specialized behavioral conditioning, Foundation parazoologists have achieved a 73% success rate in rehabilitating feral specimens. A pod of 59 SCP-3934 instances are currently contained within Lake Baokang in Site 220's Parazoology Reserve, known publicly as the Bahi Natural Reserve. Foundation parazoologists ensure that all specimens receive adequate nutrition and health care, and are responsible for overseeing a breeding program designed to minimize inbreeding-related genetic defects within the population. Bodies of deceased instances are disposed of via cremation following standard testing and examination processes. Reports of uncontained instances, whether feral or domestic, are investigated by members of MTF-52. Should a live instance be discovered, it is brought unharmed to the nearest Foundation facility. From there, transportation will be arranged to Site 220. To prevent accidental injury to personnel or the instance, only members of Phi 2 or other staff experienced in working with Mesozoic reptiles interact with the instance prior to its arrival at the reserve. <laughs> SCP-3934 were originally created in the early 20th century by Marshall Carter that, Dark, it's with like the intent to sell instances as exotic pets it me or to... denizens. The exact to processes sleep. used to accomplish this are <laughs> you know. unknown. Following their success, MC and D used viral marketing tactics to create a demand for the specimens. Starting in 1933 and continuing on for the next two decades, MC and D staff leaked images and that, stories of SCP-394 to the media. That was the photo I the mean, folks. The most folks. famous example of which that was the, photo. Is the 1934 surgeon's photo. 
The campaign was a success, that was the and the international fascination with the Loch Ness Monster the phenomenon they to each other. resulted in like a the SCP now. MC and D capitalized on the legend's popularity to sell specimens to numerous wealthy individuals of noble or industrial background in both Europe and the United States. Between 1935 and the present, an estimated 1,200 to 1,400 instances have been created and sold. Man, when people first saw it, they always thought it could be a dinosaur, which I thought about that too when I was very young at the time. SCP CN985. I thought it was dinosaur that survived the class, meteor that safe. happened years ago, but no, it couldn't SCP be. SCP CN985 is a male adult shark, three meters long and weighing 102 kilograms. By going the instance can apply a maximum what? force of 120 newtons way. to any object within a radius of about 0 0.8 meters without directly contacting the object, and can flexibly manipulate the object. The Lorenz Ampula of CN985 was significantly mutated, Darn speculating it. to be the Still. source of its anomalous properties. Still far. CN985 is Still intelligent far in and can speak fluent English and Mandarin for simple conversations. The vocal organ of the instance is located in the back of the mouth, and the organ vibrates by vomiting water to vocalize. The sound is still clear and audible, even through glass. Due to the good performance of SCP CN 985 and the Ethics Committee's claim, underwater? it is currently contained in a large landscaped aquarium. This aquarium can change water automatically and contains ornaments such as water plants, corals, as well as sanitary equipment constructed and described by CN 985. The instance is fed 10 kilograms of fresh fish daily, with the aquarium cleaned every two weeks. Speakers are placed on the outside of the tank for communication purposes. Since containment, special requests made by CN985 have been implemented. One waterproof computer, some computer games provided good performance, some waterproof biology books, waterproof materials for adult English level tests, university related advanced mathematics. Personnel interact with CN985 to maintain its mental health. In communication, it should always believe that it's being contained by the Shark and Well Conversation Foundation. What? SCP CN985 was discovered in 2000 when the Foundation's maritime patrol boat found three single submarines gathered in the same water. After the patrol boat approached, the submarines immediately dived, and no trace was found by sonar. The Foundation then discovered the wounded CN-985, and after confirming its anomalous properties, took it to the offshore research station for treatment and containment. It believes it was beaten by thugs at the time, and treated Foundation personnel as staff members of an animal protection organization. At the time, it was said to give thanks to Foundation personnel in various words. Since containment, CN-985 has been extremely cooperative with the Foundation. To date, it has not expressed any hostility to any personnel, nor has it caused a containment breach. Hello, SCP CN-985. Hello? Oh, sorry, Doctor. I'm reading. What's up? You seem to have been interested in university courses again. Why? Ah, uh, it's, it's because of the monster that fled the other day. Are you referring to the- Oh, come on! What's with the redacted? Right. I have never seen that animal in any extracurricular books or on TV. It ran out and injured several people, but it was still subdued by you. In fact, it doesn't know that you're protecting it, letting it not hurt people. Uh-huh. But how does this matter affect you? I also watched documentaries about you when I was a kid, and saw how you were mediated in order to protect the tropical rainforest. How did you deal with the whaling ships equipped with high-pressure water cannons? And how did you work with the police to end the National Animal Smuggling Group? I thought at the time, you were simply heroes. When I grow up, I will do it for you. However, when I grew up, this matter was put aside. Every day, according to the trajectory of ordinary people, Reading, exams, and further education. I didn't come here until a few days ago, and then saw the monster come out and hurt people. You took care of me, and I want to help you do something. I also want to take care of injured animals like myself. I want to help you capture these animals who fled from their cages. But... I haven't finished college. I can't help you yet. I think I have a responsibility to help you, but I need to be qualified. Since then, I've started to learn related knowledge, and can help you deal with any animals that come out. 
I think there may be a reason for why these beasts run out. But I want to research like you, and study how to make the animals here live better. If they can stay calm and stable, they probably won't run out. I want to join you. I don't know what qualifications you need for your diploma here, but I can work hard to take the exam. If I work hard enough, it shouldn't be difficult. No matter how much effort I put in, no matter how hard I work, it will be worth it if I realize my dream. Doctor, I hope you can arrange for me to take the exam. Is that okay? Thank you for your cooperation, SCPCN-985. We will consider your request. Oh my god. Another talking shark, which I think it is. SCPCN-925. Object class, <sighs> Euclid. SCPCN-925 is a what male beluga fuck? whale. The appearance is not significantly different from that of ordinary beluga whales, except the skin has a certain Don't viscosity. Tell me this one talk to the instance you. always wears Broken a top hat on its head and can be removed or brought up at will by the subject. Because it's not a the hat, hat appears to be several times larger than the standard hat, oh, and does not appear to be affected through water currents and motion. During different festivals, the shape of the hat will change depending on the festival. In addition, the instance can communicate telepathically with other creatures and read their memories. Despite CN-925 being heard communicating telepathically, audio devices such as cameras and microphones, its voice has been captured through digital equipment. The scan found that its brain is quite different from that of an ordinary beluga whale. With the brain and skull significantly enlarged, the eye structure, bone, and muscle are different, speculating as to why it has such good vision and is larger than normal. If there are human individuals to talk to and play with, SCP-CN-925 will be very happy and try to give the subject a hat and gifts. The hat presented vary according to the festival. The composition of hats donated by it are no different than that of ordinary hats. If the person rejects the hat and gift from the project, it will offer its hats and gifts at a later time. SCP-CN-925 is currently contained in a standard breeding aquarium. Located at Site CN-18, the temperature of the water is controlled by a heat exchanger and is circulated and filtered every four hours to make the turbidity of the pool less than 2.0. The air in the containment room is circulated every two hours to avoid the generation of odor. The top of the containment room is made of tempered glass to allow natural light to pass through. CN-925 requires 30 kilograms of fish or squid every day for sustenance. Staff members are allowed and encouraged to communicate with the instance. Though members with a history of beluga whaling are banned from the containment room. The subject was discovered in 2003 on a transport plane flying ah, to the same city year. Uh, the province. Born. The object was originally that's intended to be transported things. to the Oceanarium as an animal actor. A few hours after the plane like took off, Agent Jason's Kim, disguised release. as a crew member at that time, noticed that the person on board was talking about catching a beluga wearing a hat. Kim then inspected the engine room and discovered the item. After confirming the anomalous nature of the project, Kim immediately reported the instance to the Foundation. When the aircraft landed, the Foundation successfully intercepted and captured the instance. Good morning, SCP CN 925. Good morning, Doctor. What's wrong? Thank you very much for the hats and small gifts. I must ask, though, why do you give these things to me and my colleagues? Uh, what should I say? Doctor, I apologize, but we have to know why you I like this, Doctor. I don't think you belong to this world. I think that's it. So you're saying you come from another parallel world. How did you get here? I don't know, Doctor. I'm not sure why I belong to this world where he is. I don't know at all. I can't even remember who my parents are. I only know that when I opened my eyes at that time, I found out that it was just seawater. And all I had was a way at the beginning, I couldn't find a beluga group. Even if I found one, I encountered difficulty in integration. There was no problem in language communication with them at the pool, but they alienated me inexplicably. And I don't know why. Since you're so lonely, why should you give your happiness to others? It was because I was lonely. I wanted to do this. I think as long as I can send something to others, they should be happy. Then they will talk to me because they're happy, and I won't be alone. In this way, I can make many, many friends, and I will never be lonely again. But this is free, SCP-CN-925. What you get is not real friendship. Some people are close to you just for your little gift. 
There is no shortage of such people in the world. I don't care. Someone just talks to me. I just do it because I'm too lonely. Just like this for more than 10 years. Otherwise, I'll still have communication at this point. Our voices can be spread to thousands of kilometers away. I... Not many of us understand me. I can hardly communicate with them. So why are you angry about people who killed other whales? They, after all, were my kind. This is me as a whale. A little space Responsibility. Listen, this is not your reason for escaping from reality. It doesn't mean you have the sense of responsibility, but you still have feelings for the ethnic groups you have lived with, and you can't bear to say it. Why are they so indifferent to you? It's because you're strange to them. Your body shape, your hat, and all your other anomalies. They are probably the reasons they fear you. You just need to prove to them that they are friendly enough. Soon your strength will be recognized by them. Understand? I didn't mean to hurt you intentionally. I just stated facts. You can't always do this. I can understand your own selflessness, but you have to make changes. You have to find a friend who is good to you, and you should not be too low esteemed. Just like a doctor like you. Although I am happy, I don't have much free time. I have a lot of work to do. But if you want, you can chat with me anytime when I'm here. So who should I look for? Don't worry, this is Shark Nia who's studying a university course. I personally think it is suitable for you. Thank you, Doctor. Why have some gifts? No, you've given me many gifts. Leave it to your new friend. Okay, six more to go. And how far I am? SCP-3251. Object class, safe. SCP-3251 is a sapient adult male coconut crab. Despite its physiology oh, suggesting sorry, such acts to be possible, it possesses the ability to communicate uh, verbally uh, using the English uh, language. Uh, Typically uh, speaking, uh, using uh, slang uh, and phrases commonly used among pirates from the 16th to 18th centuries. SCP-3251 adorns a small black tricorn hat on its head measuring about 6 centimeters from the base of the tip. How and when it acquired this item is currently unknown. It also has a strong affection for lustrous metallic items, and will oftentimes go out of its way to acquire such objects. The secondary anomalous effects will manifest whenever SCP-3251 issues a verbal command to another coconut crab. The affected animal, hereby referred to as SCP-3251-1, will attempt to complete the task issued by 3251 until either the task is completed, or they are separated from it for a prolonged period of time. Instances of SCP-32511 do not show any signs of intelligence above what is normal for a non-anomalous member of their species and do not appear to possess any understanding or perception of the English language aside from commands issued by 3251. SCP-3251 refers to these collective group instances as McCrew and will also often refer to itself as their captain. SCP-3251 is currently held at a medium-sized terrestrial animal enclosure at Site-48. The temperature and humidity within its enclosure are regulated and may dissimulate that of its native, tropical environment. 3251 is met with the same nutritional accommodations as a non-anomalous member of its species. Level 3 clearance and permission from the operating site director is required to interview or otherwise interact with it. SCP-3251 was first discovered in when several reports of coconut crabs behaving strangely began to surface from small villages on islands all throughout the southern Pacific. These reports include crabs arriving to the island on a floating vessel, a talking crab demanding an inhabitants to forfeit all over their silverware and metallic belongings, crabs threatening the inhabitants with tools and weapons stolen from the inhabitants, as well as makeshift weapons made of sharpened sticks and rocks. Foundation operatives traveled to the villages where the incidents took place and successfully suppressed them before they went public. The same operatives then located SCP-3251, as well as 113 instances of SCP-3251-1 floating 135 kilometers off the west coast of Indonesia, believed to have been attempting to sell to Madagascar. The crabs were floating on a large piece of driftwood, compromised of fallen palm trees and loose wooden boards, 
carrying several hundred coconuts and over 163 kilograms of assorted metal objects. SCP-3251 was then taken into Foundation custody, and the instances of SCP-3251-1, now essentially non-anomalous coconut crabs, were relocated into the wild. Alright, SCP-3251. I'd like to ask you a few so questions what? today. Does it Would that talk be like okay? a pirate? Aye, it'd be alright with me. Darn it. So long as I can refuse to answer at any time. Alright, very well. So how did you become so smart, and when did you discover your ability to control others? It is a long and tragic tale. And believe me, Jim, lad, it ain't one that ends in a kiss. I'm gonna go ahead and pass on that answer. Why is it that you stole from all those islanders? A pirate's no one if he don't steal. You see a village, you go and pillage. If you want the booty, you have the booty. I've got a half dozen more phrases, but you get me point, lad. So you're only doing this to acquire metal? I don't think silverware is worth quite as much as you think it is. Ah. Uh, you take me for some sort of fool, do ya? I know how much the treasure be worth. I steal it because I like to steal. Gotta hunt the bounty, but the bounty be in the hunt. There ain't quite a feeling like being out on the sea. Knowing that whatever you want, you take. The rules don't apply to you. True freedom. What are your thoughts on SCP-3251-1? Do you feel bad knowing that you're manipulating your own kind? Aye, they be but animals compared to me. I love me crew like a man loves an old pair of breeches. Good, reliable, get the job done, and cover me arse in a pinch. If I'm being honest though, I'd love to have someone to actually talk to out on the open seas, like yourself. You be the only person I've sat down and had a conversation with in a long while. How'd you like to be part of me, new crew? Well, that's really quite ridiculous. Aye, aye. Let me finish my proposal, lad. You come sail with me on open waters. No one tells you what to do. Anything you want, consider it yours. I've been losing my mind alone on the sea. Not to mention alone here in the cell. You seem like the sort of guy who's been pushed around quite a bit in your time. So I'll offer you something you always want. Something you haven't thought about since you'd be a boy on your father's pricey yacht. I'll let you be a pirate. How did you... Look, you're stuck in this place whether you like it or not, so there will be no new crew. I just need to ask you one more question and then this interview is over. Why were you going to Madagascar? I... been waiting for this one. I was going to bury my treasure with the rest. Persuaded yet? No, not in the slightest. No amount of forks or knives are going to convince me to quit my job and sail the seas with a talking crab. Aye, but it ain't knives I got stashed there. It be gold. A whole lot of it. How... how much? Alright, this is simply ridiculous. This interview is over. What the freak? SCP-811, Object Class, Euclid. SCP-811 is shaped similarly to a human female with disproportionately long and thin limbs and a slightly bloated abdominal region. It is 171 centimeters tall and weighs just under 47 kilograms due to its strange physiology. Its skin has slight abrasive properties and is a mottled green color that serves to camouflage it among the reeds in its natural habitat. What? Its sweat has been observed to act as a mild skin irritant. It has extremely oily black hair that has proven to be resistant to cleaning with conventional shampoos. It shows partial comprehension of human language consistent with case studies of feral children that have been abandoned at a few years old, instead of as infants. 
the Palmer Planter surfaces of SCP-811 skin constantly secrete a clear, green-tinted mucus with minor adhesive properties. This mucus does not appear to have any effect on its own tissue, but any other organic matter that it comes in contact with begins to rapidly decompose through processes not fully understood, reducing the matter into slightly viscous black liquid. SCP-811 can then absorb said liquid through its skin and directly into its circulatory system. Tests have shown that its entire circulatory system is filled with liquefied decaying matter. SCP-811 can then absorb said liquid through its skin and directly into its circulatory system. Tests have shown that the entire circulatory system is filled with liquefied decaying matter. Biopsies taken from 811 have showed the presence of anaerobic bacteria in all examined cells, which, due to the apparent lack of anything resembling functional red blood cells in the subject, are currently presumed to be what 811 uses to metabolize the chemicals in its circulatory system. SCP-811 does not defecate or otherwise produce feces in any traditional sense, and entirely lacks a small or large intestine. Instead, cellular waste and substances it is unable to metabolize collect in what is, anatomically speaking, its stomach. Within its stomach, enzymes and bacteria flora cause it to congeal into a grainy tar-like substance that it periodically voids by voluntary projectile regurgitation, a mechanism which it uses to hunt. It preferentially aims at the face or at any perceived open wounds on its target, then it waits for the target to die of either immediate asphyxiation or in a few days of multi-systemic failure resulting from aggressive bacterial infection. Its teeth do not seem to have any abnormal resistance to decay resulting from chronic exposure to compounds and microflora on its waist. SCP-811 is kept in a climate-controlled cylindrical glass enclosure, filled to a depth with wetland soil and stagnant fresh water. It's furnished with a variety of aquatic plants from its native swamp and as the remaining vegetation there has exhibited the adaptation to grow quickly from injuries and dirt during contact with SCP-811, as long as the roots are undamaged. Logs of manageable size and additional humus-rich soil may be provided for good behavior. Air that is ventilated into the enclosure is not recirculated back into the rest of the facility. The methane resulting from SCP-811's normal interaction with its environment is not anomalous and is bottled for use as fuel. No heated elements or open flames are permitted inside the enclosure. The enclosure is tested daily for pH and microbe levels in both soil and water, as well as changes in chemical composition. The enclosure is cleaned bi-weekly, preferably by D-Class personnel. Subject is given at least 5 kilograms of live food 24 hours after its completion of its previous meal. Subject is not adverse to preying on humans, and it is recommended that personnel not enter the enclosure if SCP-811 has not been fed in over 16 hours. No invasive medical procedure is performed on SCP-811 outside of emergency situations in which a procedure is required to save the subject's life. While SCP-811 is not generally aggressive unless it feels hungry or threatened, all handling personnel are cautioned that it is still an opportunistic ambush predator, and all safety precautions must still be taken to avoid possible injury or infection. All personnel entering the enclosure wear full-body non-organic biohazard suits and breathing masks, and must be in groups of at least two. No personnel are allowed to enter the enclosure if they have open wounds or sores anywhere on their body. Those suffering from asthma or other respiratory affecting conditions are prohibited from entering the enclosure without a signed note from a physician with level 4 security clearance. Skin. Wait, you 
mean you had skin like ours? It appears so. D. What after? Bean stick heater. Cold. And needle. D. <clears throat> They're called needles. Need dull heater. Cold. And then. Bean. Red. Red, red, red. Like you mean. Was very hungry. Scared. Ape man. Skin. Like this. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. SCP-1340. Object class, safe. SCP-1340 is a species of cave-dwelling electrosective rays belonging to the family shared with other mantas. SCP-1340 was discovered living within a large underwater chamber as part of an unexplored region of the Oxbelha cave system near Quintana Roo, Mexico. All specimens of SCP-1340 are distinguishable by their large triangular pectoral fins, horn-shaped cephalic fins, large terminal mouths, fading or complete loss of pigmentation. SCP-1340 also have a pair of vestigial eyes and can communicate by utilizing electrical signals of varying voltage, amperage, and frequency by the organs on each side of its head. Foundation researchers and cryptanalysts have developed and calibrated an electroacoustic transducer for converting these electrical signals into audio. Since deciphering this electrical activity, it is now known that SCP-1340 are actually sapient and highly social. The colony in captivity has been revealed to be a selective council of 118 inducted male specimens of SCP-1340. The colony has been observed to regularly discuss business and other current events in an open forum governed by principles of parliamentary-like procedure. SCP-1340 is held within Containment Aquarium Tank 3 at Research Site 45. Personnel assigned to SCP-1340 observe standard aquatic zoological containment protocols. 150 kilograms of food pellets made up of ground krill are deposited into its containment tank four times a week. Voltmeter and galvanometer instrumentation are installed within the tank to monitor and decipher fluctuations of electrical activity. Field agents in coordination with the Mexican government are advised to report any sightings of the remaining population of SCP-1340 within the Oxbelha cave system. I hereby call this meeting into order. Will the assembly now recite the plan? How they speak this language. The How they speak like us. We, the nation order, pledge to act in accordance with our laws, seek latest decisions for the betterment of our children. We will do right to all manner of others as after the laws and usages of our universe. Without fear or favor, affection or ill will, we are the hearts of the law. Keepers of the peace and defenders of the faith, we spare our own pieces to the greater good. Very well. I hereby reopen previous discussion. Will the elder brother of the exploratory committee please recite How the they speak English? How they speak it like us? Judge of the council. Based on our recent expedition attempts, we concluded that their great chamber has dramatically changed in shape for unknown reasons. Weaponous! Heretic! Order! Contain order, I say! Order! Order! I will not have this meeting be controlled by outbursts like this again. The council will now refocus on one who looks in cold places. Yes, for unknown reasons to us, in contraction to everything we know about our universe. What we do understand is this. Our chamber is now smaller. Our chamber now takes on a seemingly symmetrical shape. A great layer of emptiness now exists above us. The floor is clean of stone and sand. And most importantly, food can no longer be readily available, but seems to ornate from the emptiness. Hey, discussion amongst the Council Brothers is now open. Elder Brother, are you saying that we are trapped inside the Great Chamber? Well, oh my God, not exactly. Chamber. We have yet to find a sizable exit point. Our committee has discovered multiple tunnels where water flows in and out. Elder Brother, could these tunnels be excavated? We have not looked into that. 
pursuant to the prophecies. Order! Order! As it was foretold at the beginning of the fourth reconciliation, which heralds... Guard! Subjugate one who practices the old way. The great return of the prodigal demons. The demons have killed our god's signal. Beware of them! We cannot tolerate such radical madness in this dire time. Now, let us continue with discussion. Sorry about that, folks. I was just in the middle of talk, so I mostly uh, cut that part of the video just in case. SCP-169, Object Class, Keter. Uh-oh. SCP-169 is surmised to be a marine anthropod of enormous size, known as the Leviathan by generations of sailors in oral looks history. Like it, looks like an Earth, Presumed at different. first to be a myth. It was detected in 1912 by Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 during an investigation of paranormal activity around the archipelago. A lead researcher discovered the archipelago to have moved at least three kilometers from its original location. A reconnaissance mission performed by the USS revealed the archipelago to have protrusions of rock-like plates covering an enormous organic mass. The Foundation was brought in immediately to begin threat management. Well, Foundations estimate 169's body length to be what between 2,000 and 8,000 kilometers. The creature is thought to have existed since the Precambrian era. Almost nothing is known about 169's habits, such as reproductive capabilities, if any, food source, and nesting area. Research is pending approval. The archipelago, known as the Islands, have historically been uninhabited. Upon handover to the Foundation, inhabitants were evacuated on the pretense of rising sea levels, though the archipelago has remained above sea level for several millennia. Almost Any done. change of depth by SCP-169 can result in the disappearance of the entire archipelago. SCP-169 moves slowly, less than one kilometer per week, but seems only to be adrift. Its method of propulsion is unknown. Regular seismic tremors seem to indicate breathing about every three months, causing minor shifts in the island's terrain, suggesting that the creature is probably dormant. The USS was scuttled with all hands immediately after the discovery of SCP-169 with the permission of the American government. The public is forbidden from entering the archipelago created by SCP-169 due to the conveniently large number of resident endangered bird species. Satellite footage is doctored in order to suppress knowledge of 169's movements. NASA is currently cooperating with the Foundation in keeping the existence of 169 quiet, and is currently permitting the Foundation use of their satellites for photographic use. That is strange, like... How many of it SCP may not be true, Object like, class. do it be like... Uh, SCP-835 appears to be a large mass of coral-like polyps weighing planet, but they're hiding under. The individual polyps are larger Not than like any I'm doing known coral species, growing that more than one meter in diameter in some big, cases. Un, big, the central bigger, mass is roughly a oval shape with a very large polyp Not in like each that, end. I mean. A35 is incapable of locomotion and appears to anchor itself with the large tentacles projected from the polyps. They the are heck? also used in feeding, and are blood, coated with a blood. sticky adhesive substance. Uh, the tentacles are also quite strong and have been shown to be capable of damaging the plate skin. The coral of 835 is extremely hard, requiring high-powered diamond drills to collect even what small samples. It also grows at a very that? accelerated rate, capable of adding 22.68 kilograms of mass every day. SCP-835 is susceptible to many chemicals, which cause it to seal up and halt all growth for 24 hours, prompting the development and use of suppression tactic A-A6. It emits a large mass of semi-liquid material several times a day from the large polyps on each end. This appears to be made of semi-digested solids, fecal material, and semen. This mass also has several forms of virus, bacteria, and parasites, many of which have been found only within itself. The bacterium forms the major concern for containment due to its role in the reproductive cycle. Vertebrate animals infected with SCP-835-I5 will undergo a variety of symptoms, such as constant hunger, calcification, and polyps on the skin. Rapid reduction in intelligence and increased aggression. The end-stage infection appears to convert the subject into an additional instance of SCP-835. 
attempts to determine what, if any, intelligence remains have been inconclusive. However, 835 appears to have a limited amount of awareness. There's no form of treatment or antibiotic that has been shown to halt or reverse the effects. This, coupled with the extremely hard shell of SCP-835, form a major obstacle to neutralization. Any force capable of cracking open would also cause the slurry inside to spread and cause additional infection. SCP-835 is monitored and checked daily for new growth. In the event it becomes hostile, suppression tactic A-A6 is immediately implemented until aggressive action ceases. The containment area is maintained in the open ocean due to the highly aggressive response of 835 to confinement for any length of time. Waste issued by 835 is immediately collected and contained. Feeding takes place twice daily to consist of any form of local aquatic species. Should it enter a rage state, higher level mammals are issued as a food supply. Staff remain at least five meters away from 835 at all times. Anyone working near it has safety lines attached to recall winches. Contact with A35 will result in the immediate recall of all staff and implementation of suppression tactic A-A6. Should contact result in full capture of a staff member, A35 is monitored constantly until the Sorry release of the Just subject. Just had to uh, crack my bones, that's all. But still, how far? Oh my god. Almost there, almost there, almost there, folks. But... Some of these are really disturbing. Because a kid or so, you know. I know, the final, but how long is SCP 3000, object class. SCP 3000 is a massive aquatic serpentine entity. The full length of it is impossible to determine, but is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. SCP 3000 is typically a sedentary uh. creature, only moving its head in response to certain stimuli or during feeding. The majority of its body is located in and around the Ganges fan, and rarely moves at all. It is carnivorous, and despite its sedentary nature, it is capable of moving quick to dispatch prey. It is hypothesized that it does not require sustenance to maintain its biological ah, functions, going down there. while it excretes a thin layer of viscous, dark gray substance classified as Y909. The end result of its digestive process is currently unknown. SCP-3000 is a Class 8 cognitohazardous entity. Direct observation of it may cause severe mental alterations in viewers. Individuals who directly observe it, as well as any individuals within a certain distance, experience unexplicable head pain, Is paranoia, general fear and panic, and memory loss and alteration. The 151 Hollisterastic Protocol had been snake. developed and implemented to create a strategy for the management of the Y909 chemical compound excreted from SCP-3000. The process involves feeding it a D-class, and while it's in its digestive period, several specialized teams of divers extract the chemical compounds and transfer the collected substance to secure containers before returning to the surface. The teams are then monitored and tested for any effects from the encounter. The area containing SCP-3000, currently a region of the Bay of Bengal, roughly 300 kilometers in diameter, is routinely patrolled by Foundation naval vessels. Under no circumstances are civilians allowed to attempt deep sea exploration or diving Sorry efforts in the quarantined again. area. Individuals believed to have contacted SCP-3000 are contained, annoying. quarantined, and processed at Site-151. Individuals affected by the anomalous properties of it are held in containment indefinitely. The Foundation submarine SCPF Ermita monitors the location of the foremost section of SCP-3000, currently located within the Ganges fan, roughly 0.7 kilometers beneath the bay. The Ermita is tasked with carrying out Let the Aztec protocol, and staffing regulations on board the vessel are subject to the guidelines of that protocol. SCP-3000 was discovered in 1971, shortly after Bangladeshi fishing boats and 15 fishermen Wait, were reported missing after drifting near the Indian coast. As the country of Bangladesh had only been recently established at the time, and had been subject to significant political persecution on the part of Pakistan, the incident received high-profile media attention due to the fears that it was the result of foreign aggression. Local coastal dispatch units could not locate the missing boats, fueling further media hysteria. Foundation researchers stationed in Calcutta drew similarities between the disappearance and another incident two years earlier. 
A thorough search aided by Marriott Pachler counters revealed the location of the two boats, as well as an unknown previously undiscovered mass deep below the surface of the Bay of Bengal. Further investigation by Foundation divers discovered the existence of SCP-3000. The area was quickly secured and current containment procedures were put in place in April 1972. The Aztec protocol was adapted in October of 1998. Okay, Command. We're situated in the airlock and ready to roll. Oh, no. Confirmed. Go ahead and sound off. Orion 9, Alpha, check. Orion 9, Bravo, check. Oh, my God. All right. Let's move to We're in position nice. about 500 meters from the head of this creature. Make sure your tethers are on good and tight. We don't want any of you getting separated out there. What's visibility like down here today, Command? Oh, please. Stand by. They're gonna die. They're gonna die. Trust me. About three meters. So it's dark as fuck. Got it. Why are we so far out? The size of this thing is hard to comprehend, and it's wrapped up in itself in several places. We can't get too close because there's too much body there. The entity hasn't moved in about too three weeks. Too much body? What? I don't no. Know. Informative. It moves slightly with the currents down here, but nothing more than that. If it weren't for the head movement that was observed by the first submersible team, we probably wouldn't know if it was alive or not. That's reassuring. Alright. Tethers are tight. Flood the chamber. Confirmed. Turn on your lights, boys. Here we go. You know, it's really a good idea to just show the footage. Of course, it's not a real thing, but you could have like a good animator to do the to, to do the footage. Hey, idea, Alpha, you know, I, show uh, the animation. Maybe this well, is just using ask. the voice and just subtitles. Your lamp is on, Foxtrot. It... What? What did you call me? Your designation, Mulhaney. Foxtrot. I'm Foxtrot, boss. What are you on about? I don't understand what you mean by designation. It's your goddamn call sign, Bravo. What do you mean? Who's Bravo? I, uh, I was gonna say something. Uh, you guys still there? Stand by. Yeah, we're having a little trouble out here. I'm not sure who. We seem to have some confusion over designations, and I'm not sure where we're heading. Where exactly are we? Do you guys feel that? I just got an awful headache. It's like needling in my brain. Something. Dive team, be advised that we believe you may be experiencing some detrimental cognitive effects. Keep moving forward, and we'll give you more this information as we receive it. Noted, Command. Be advised that Foxtrot has a terrible headache. Are we going in the right direction? You are roughly 150 meters from the head of the entity, Alpha. You should be getting a visual soon. Command, I don't see anything. Where are we? Command, update info. We're almost there. Alpha, dive team, be advised. We're picking up movement from the entity on radar. I don't see anything down here. What the hell are we supposed to be looking? All I can see is darkness. There's a chill foul wind blowing. Pushing me towards a brink I can't see. Shut up. Command. Bravo is unresponsive. Requesting immediate termination of mission. Wait a second. Dive team, we're going to pull you back in immediately. We have reason to believe that. You can hear something over there. Alpha. Your light. Get your phone. Dive team, something is moving towards you. Repeat. Something is moving towards you. Prepare to return. I can't see. How far it's are we right from- It's right there! It's right there! What are you both doing? 
Oh, they're dead. Alpha. Alpha. Bravo. Foxtrot. Do any of you hear us? Bravo, you need to speak up. We can't. It can hear you. Don't let it hear you. Something has bound up the winds between you and us. We can't. It's opening its mouth. Oh, it's so dark. There's... Where am I? Swim. What? Get away. There's only darkness. Swim. Only. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Foxtrot? Foxtrot? Alpha? Bravo? They're Talk dead. to me. They're, what happened? They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. It ate him. Fuck. Oh, never mind. He's then. gone. It took him whole heat. God damn it, Alpha, what are you doing? Alpha. Oh, no. God damn feather, Alpha. It's pulling us in. Well, they're dead. Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? I repeat, Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? This is Bravo. I'm floating in the dark. I You're inside the mouth, the aren't log, you? But they're hard to make out. I caught my tether, Alpha Wood. I think he's gone. See his light anymore. Acknowledged. We're coming God, to. Just let me think for a second. Cognition. I don't know. This thing doesn't work around it. Your brain can't form thought. It hurts. It's like dying. Bravo. Do you have eyes on the entity? It's in my head, guys. Coiled up in there like a snake. And something about it is caustic. I can see it. Just in front of me. It's not doing anything. It isn't okay, moving. It's hanging out. there with its mouth like open. I think it's finished eating. Fluid is seeping through the skin around its head, about a meter back. Just looking at the stuff is making me like the room is spinning. I feel nauseous. My head isn't working right. <laughs> Send you out a crew to get you. Just hold on. Don't do that. Not. You have to be trained to not feel the things I'm feeling. Otherwise, it will get into you. Maybe it will anyway. Who knows? What? It feels like the end of the world down here, fellas. My heart is really going off the charts. Just. I got a sample. I'll attach it to one of those little balloons and let it float up. You'll be able to get it later. Don't spend too much time around that stuff. It... It doesn't... Your mind... It... <sighs> Bravo? I think I'm dying. I just want to get away from here. You know? It occurs to me. <laughs> Don't send anyone else out here. It's so dark. Like a black hole? Bravo. Well, that's dark right there, huh? Oh. Well, that's the end for the video, folks. And that was pretty dark for that last one, huh? Being trapped down there in the ocean with that big giant snake. Well, it seems it can mess up your mind, give you a large headache. 
which I hate it. So, I don't know, but that's one big huge creature. Even that other one with some sort of unknown shape like a bug. Looks like it's hiding a big creature around the earth. I don't know, but still. Well, that's the end for this one. I don't know if there will be part two, or this is just it. Who knows? Because that's a lot of creatures around this world, this planet. It's like none of us won't survive from these, huh? So I hope you enjoyed this reaction video, folks. I tried my best to get this thing ready because sometimes it might be long, or just because some of my siblings are kind of distracting a lot in this room. So yeah, I might get another reaction video ready because I was um, about to watch Team Fabulous 2 reanimated today, but I got one comment for me to do this one instead, so I got to. So I hope next weekend I'll react to Team Fabulous 2 reanimated, just in case. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful day, I mean.